This is the Dark Illumination Report podcast extra for Sunday, July 12th, 2020. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about hell in the afterlife. This is a Dark Illumination Report extra with RJ Womack. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining me for another episode. I'm glad you're here. First thing I want to say is thank you, everybody, for your responses to my previous episodes and and uh, thank you for sharing your story with me and a lot of your stories with me. A lot of you have said you've been listening to this podcast for years, and I was really surprised at how many of you have been listening for years and never responded. I also want to let you know that you're always welcome to ask me questions. You're always welcome to to um, contact me if you want to and, and talk to me about some issues and stuff like that. But the one thing I do want to say is that I have a new appreciation for the importance of this podcast. First, I'm glad I made the decision to go to a daily schedule. I think that was critically important. I think I think it's one of the key facets of this ministry. When I first originally started this podcast or started out with this podcast, I intended it to be a daily show, uh, a short daily show with short episodes. That's why the intro is Dark Illuminations Report podcast extra and the uh, original dark illumination report podcast was supposed to be the longer version which was supposed to happen either weekly or monthly where we had an interview and an hour long episode the the uh, extra episodes were supposed to be daily short episodes and the regular episodes were supposed to be once a week or once a month with interviews that lasted an hour but unfortunately a lot of people don't want to come on this show and don't want to be interviewed on a satanic show. I've invited several guests and most of them have declined. Plus the things that I say are controversial in the satanic community, obviously going to diabolism and rejecting contemporary Satanism is not something that is very popular. So that has a lot to do with people not liking what I have to say. But the other thing I want to point out is that the reason I've taken kind of a new approach or the, I have a new attitude towards this podcast is I realize that a lot of you are struggling with very serious life issues and the majority of the audience is starting to change and it's becoming a much older audience with um, a background in paganism and an understanding of the history of occultism and of, of religion and magic and so we're getting rid of that kind of teenage kind of black metal audience and it's starting to attract an older audience with more serious questions, more questions related to life and life issues. And I realize that a lot of you, like I said, are going through really tough stuff. And some people have said that, you know, they were on the verge of suicide and, and uh, Satan helped them and guided them and directed them and helped lead them to this podcast in order to give them some structure and help them. So I realized that this just isn't a podcast. You know, I looked at it as kind of, yeah, it's a religious thing to do. And yeah, I'm doing it for Satan, but it's just a podcast. Nobody really cares. It's not a real ministry. But since I've heard from a lot of you about how this podcast has helped you through a lot of difficult times, I realized this is a serious ministry. This is really helping people. And I need to make sure that I give you the best content I can and that I take this podcast seriously. You know, I've been saying for months that I'm going to start the ministry. I realize now that this podcast is the ministry. And I have a responsibility as a minister, as a priest of Satan, to really try to up my game. And I'm going to try to slowly up my game and make this podcast better because I realize that Satan is guiding people to this podcast. He is using this podcast to help people. And I have a responsibility to him to make sure that I do the best job I can. And I want to tell you how much I appreciate all of you listening and all of you who have contacted me. You know, there's a lot of people who take their listeners for granted. There's a lot of people who think they're owed attention. There's a lot of people who their notoriety goes to their head. And I just want you to know that I appreciate each and every one of you. I may not write back to each and every one of you as fast as I should, but I'm not ignoring you. And many of you who I haven't answered, I am going to answer you either on the podcast or by email. So please don't think that I'm ignoring you in any way. 
And that leads me to one of the things I wanted to talk about. I was originally supposed to talk about a Kino, and I, to be honest, I just don't feel like talking about the Diabolicon. I don't feel like talking about a Kino right now. And since we have an episode every day, and since I'm committed to that now, because I realize it's helped so many people, they look forward to this podcast. Um, we have plenty of time to talk about a Kino and any other subject we want to talk about. But the one thing I want to talk about today is how much people worry about the idea of hell, how much Christianity has affected them and the way they think. Now, for the record and to lay it out for everyone who might be interested to know, I don't care whether every word of the Bible were true. I don't care if there is a lake of fire waiting for me for worshiping Satan. I'm going to worship Satan regardless. So this isn't an issue for me, the fear of the lake of fire or hell, because I made peace with that a long time ago. I made peace with the fact that Satan is my God, and I don't really care if there's a lake of fire waiting for me. Now, that doesn't mean I believe there's a lake of fire waiting for me, because I know that Christianity has corrupted everything. They've corrupted every ancient religion. They've created this concept of a lake of fire, or eternal damnation that didn't exist in pre-Christian religions. That is a monotheistic, Judeo-Christian, Abrahamic religious um, belief, the lake of fire, the eternal burning in hell sort of thing. Uh, at least as far as I can tell, all other ancient religions that I've been able to find don't have a concept of a lake of fire. Um, the Jewish religion doesn't even have a concept of a lake of fire. They have shell or the grave, but they don't have a concept of the lake of fire. So I need to make that correction because I said Abrahamic religious tradition, it's not even true. It's mostly Islam and Christianity. So you have to understand that. And you have to understand that Christianity tries to make you afraid. It tries to make you worry about the afterlife so that you won't question anything. The other religions didn't think of the afterlife or the underworld as a realm of punishment. In fact, the idea of the underworld being a dark place where you get punished for bad behavior is something that came about after the Christians started to influence religion. In fact, there's some um, scholars who suggest that Valhalla and the Viking um, concept of the afterlife is actually not in the heavens, but in the underworld, and it only became part of the heavens, and this Odin as the all-father kind of Christian god type person was a concept that came about after the Christians started to influence the religion. For me, the whole idea of the underworld, just uh, as far as being a lake of fire, just doesn't matter. As I said, I've already made peace with what I believe and what I think, and what I honestly think is that the Christian religion and the Muslim religion just created the lake of fire and the concept of the lake of fire to forcibly cause people to worship their God. And I think the Christian God, the parasite that he is, has no problem with that. Speaking of um, the Christian God, I just want to say this for anybody who might be a new listener. I don't believe um, the Christian God is the creator God. I don't believe that he likes this earth. I don't believe that he particularly likes mankind. I think that's one of the reasons one of the reasons why he opposes us is because he doesn't like the earth. He doesn't like the nature of the earth. There is some indication and some people believe that Lucifer in fact created the earth. And I think that that may very well be true, although I don't have any evidence to back that up, because of the fact that Jehovah hates the earth so much, and he doesn't seem to want to be a part of it. Have you ever noticed how the Christian God seems to want to separate himself from this earth and anything having to do with it? Whereas Satan and the pre-Christian gods, the pagan gods, the gods that we associate with being demons, typically teach us to embrace this earth, to embrace nature, to embrace life, and Jehovah is all about separating himself from this life, from nature, from mankind. He doesn't like it. He sees it as sinful. And anybody who comes before him must purify themselves before they can be in his presence. If that's not an indication that he is not the creator, he is not the true God of nature, then what else do you need? But the point being is that these are things you have to make peace with. And I'm perfectly confident in all that I've learned about how 
Christianity corrupted so many pagan traditions and so many ideas of uh, pagan ideas about the afterlife. I'm confident that I do not believe in a lake of fire. I do not believe in a place of torture, nor do I believe that that's where I'm going to end up when I die. But even as I said, even if it was possible that everything in the Christian Bible were true, it wouldn't make any difference to me because I've made an eternal pact to serve Satan and his kingdom regardless. So for me, the, the question is already settled regardless of what the outcome may be or the reality may be. So maybe it's not an easy question for you. Maybe you're still struggling with it. But for me, it's a very easy um, thing to deal with. It doesn't matter to me. The only thing that matters to me is I've made a pledge to Satan to serve him for eternity, and that's it. That's the only thing that's relevant. Anyway, that's it for today, guys. I hope this helps. I hope uh, you got something out of it. And uh, as always, you can contact me at Brother Nero1593 at gmail.com. If you have any questions or comments, you can also contact me on Skype at Dark I Report. That's Dark, the letter I Report. And remember, I only take um, voice chat with appointments. And so if you want to talk to me on voice chat, if you have a question, uh, you can do that. But please contact me and give me a date and a time where you're available. And I'll see if I can match my schedule up to that. Until next time, take care of yourself. May Satan be with you. See you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to the Dark Illumination Report podcast. For the latest news headlines, show information, and more, go to rjwomack.com. That's R-J-W-O-M-A-C-K. <laughs>